we are on the last part of this chapter that is transport in plants. Up till now we have seen the transport of water in two parts. One was when it is taken from the soil by root hair up to the xylem and then ascent of sap that is with the help of various forces like transpiration pull and all those how it goes up to the top post leaves. Now here we are talking about movement of food. So it is the transport of food and we know that the food gets transported by fluid. Now to understand the structure of uh, the phloem, we have already done this earlier but let us quickly go over. In phloem there are seed tubes or seed cells. At maturity we know that these seed cells and seed tubes get enucleated and they have companion cells or albuminous cells in case of gymnosperms. So they have companion cells. So if we just draw one seed tube, it is a little elongated structure and the ends have perforated plates which are known as the sieve plates. And along with every seed tube, there is a companion cell. So this is how the structure is. Now, when we say the food, and we have not talked about two other things, that is phloem fiber and phloem parenchyma. We are just discussing the two main cells which are helping in this movement of food. The movement of food is by mass flow hypothesis. Mass flow hypothesis. This means that the food which is to be transported goes in bulk and it is also explained by a simple theory which is known as source to sink theory. Source to sink theory. Source means where the food is synthesized that is leaf and the sink is the place where the food is stored. So it can be anything. So it is storage or it can be root, stem, leaf depending upon the plant that we are talking of. If we are talking of sugar cane, then the food is stored in the stem. And if we are talking about some tuber, then it is stored in underground stem. Or if you are talking of beetroot, then it is stored in underground root, the solar root. So depending upon that storage organ, it will go to that sink. Now how does this movement take? One more important thing which we have to uh, recall, we said the carbohydrate is synthesized as, so synthesized as glucose. Then it is transported as sucrose. Glucose is a highly re uh, reactive reducing sugar. Sucrose is a disaccharide, non-reactive, so it is easier to transport a non-reactive molecule. And then this carbohydrate is stored as starch. So it is synthesized as glucose, it is transported as sucrose and it is stored as starch, which is a polysaccharide. Now how is this transport taking place? And then we will see in which direction is this transport taking. Suppose the food which is synthesized, that is sucrose, the sugar that we are talking of, is dumped into the sieve tubes or sieve cells. So it first comes into companion cells and from companion cell it is transferred to the sieve tubes. So it is not directly coming, it is coming with the help of companion cells. Now when the sucrose concentration increases. Say here we are talking like this. So inside the sieve tube the sucrose concentration will increase. The inner medium will become hypertonic. As it becomes hypertonic we have also uh, understood the movement of water depends on tonicity and water moves from hypotonic to hypertonic. That means from surrounding cells, water is going to move into the seed tubes. Now here the pressure starts to build up and if 
The next C2 has less pressure as compared to this one. Then the material would move from the region where the pressure has built up to the region where the pressure is less. The next sieve tube can be here also. The next can be, uh, suppose we draw one more companion cell and sieve tube here also. And say in all these three, the pressure is lower as compared to this one. So from here, the food will be transported to all those sieve tubes or cells where the pressure is low. As soon as the material from this one is transported to the cells with lower pressure, their pressure increases because here now this will become hyper and water will come in. So pressure built up will take place here and it will move to the next one. So it is actually moving due to accumulation of the sugar inside the cell. Due to this sugar accumulation, the medium becomes hypertonic, endosmosis takes place and then the material starts to move into different areas. Suppose here, the next tissue that we are talking of is the storage organ. And as soon as it is shifted here, this shift from the sieve tubes to storage organs is with the help of ATP. That means it is an active process. And as soon as it comes here, it will change into starch. Starch is a polysaccharide and it is insoluble. It would remain in the form of grains. So it will not change the tonicity of the, uh, the structure here. And that is why endosmosis will not take place here. So in which direction is the movement of food taking place? It can go up, sideways, lower. That means transport of food takes place in all direction. So it is multi multi-directional transport. Whereas when we were talking about water, we said it is normally or usually it is unidirectional because the root is the absorption uh, related structure and it has to go up to the topmost leaves. Whereas the leaves can be anywhere in the plant and wherever it is synthesized, that, is, that means the source and the storage. That means if this is a plant, here is a leaf, here is another leaf and here is a fruit where the food is to be stored. So from this leaf also the food can come into this fruit and from this leaf also it can come depending upon where that pressure built up is less. So movement of food takes place through fluid and it is multi-directional because it is pressure related and this movement takes place in a bulk and that is why we call it mass flow hypothesis. It is explained from or using the principle of source to sink. That means from where it is synthesized to wherever it has to be stored. So this completes the movement of uh, both the things that is water as well as food in the plant. So our chapter for transport in plants is complete. Now we will take up the next chapter from the next page.